Hi folks, Rob here with another Rob Plays, and this time we're going Amiga style with the Amiga conversion of Silkworm. I originally played the 64 version of this quite a lot back in the day, um, really game I really enjoyed a lot, and played the Amiga one a bit, and really got to see how, how this compares. Um, yeah, it's originally put out by Tecmo in the arcades in 1988, and Virgin Tronic released it a year later for the home systems. When the conversion is done by a mob called Random Access, who I hadn't really heard of before, but they did a really good job with this one. So I'm going to dive in, um, play the heli first round, might do one of each. So the storyline is kind of nonsensical in, in a way that you'd expect for, a, for an arcade conversion. Um, the fourth great war has come and gone, and as part of like sorting out peace, they've decided to outlaw nukes. That's actually a pretty good idea, I think. Yeah, landmine shield. Um, but problem is, a whole bunch of military soldiers are like, no way, we don't want... Not really a fan of that, so... Ooh. So they don't really want that, and so they've started a coup, and... In classic uh, video game tradition, the Earth is under threat, and you're part of Operation Silkworm because, as I said, Earth's dangling by by a thread, and you need to take out the generals and save the universe. Uh, not the universe, the planet. All right. So one of the things that, that makes Silkworm you know, unique from a lot of other shooters is this whole um, Jeep and heli thing. So when starting a single player game, you pick. In this case, I have to. The fault was the heli, I have to swap the controls over later to play the jeep. But when you play two players, one player takes the heli, the other takes the jeep. And I really like that from the sense of just adding to... Um, to adding to... Like the, the computer, you know, most shooters, every, you know, both players play the same. But the fact that one of you has to, you know, avoid ground objects, and one of you can fly through the air. Makes it really unique. Um, so with the heli, you've got you know you've got your primary fire shooting forward, and you've got that downward shot. For the jeep, you have a little cannon that can arc uh, 180 degrees on your back, and it's yeah you know, nice straightforward controls. Really love the graphics here. I mean, as I said, I grew up the C64 version, and that was amazing. Um, I mean, that scored 90 plus ratings in the mags, and so did the Amiga version. You know, I, I, I'll, the sprites are still, they're a little large, they're not t as tiny, ooh. The thing I hate about I'm dying is you lose your power up there. So the way things work, oh, enough about the race. So the way things work, you shoot enemies and you can see that counter sitting under the wave. When that gets to zero, and it has to be noted, that counts down in hex, not decimal. So 10 on the counter is actually 16. You get this goose copter appearing, which you have to blast the neck, and that'll give you power ups. And the first one is Twid Fire, which is what I had before, before getting slaughtered. And then you think it's Rapid Fire after that. Ooh! Curses. I think that's my last life. Alright. Oh, I guess that's game over. Um, ooh, press Y button to continue. Let's go for another credit here. See if I can get a little further. Let's be all right at this on the C64. Like I said, it was a great version there. This is actually quite a bit tougher, and I think it's things like um, the actual ground placement of the, the items here. On the 64, it was just like one flat plane on the ground, and then you know had all your air obstacles here. There are these hills. And I think that adds to the game a lot. One thing I'm obviously liking here is the fact that it continues. There weren't any on the C64 version. You just had one life and that's one, you know, one credit and that was it. You know, in single play, you might, if you're quick enough, be able to bring in the Jeep. But you pretty much were limited. Alright, fairly. But I mean, as I said, that that whole async multiplayer thing is. One of the things I like most about this, and then it's sort of sequel swift, where you you know you can't just 
you actually have to, you know, cover each other because the Jeep can, you know, have its firing, but you need to, is the heli to be able to help clear the way a bit, especially with things like these tanks descending down. But the Jeep, you know, can arc and, you know, help clear firing behind you from the heli. Yeah, and it'll probably make some of these bits a little easier. Um, the fact of the matter is, truth be told, is the game really it? Oh, and I missed the shield. Nice job. Um, you know, it's really about being able to, you know, cooperatively control it. And I think that adds to the game a lot. Oh, so not only have we got this goose copter, but we've got the second level, the second boss general to take out as well. <laughs> My luck, isn't it? There, I'm, this is frantic and tough, and I'm really digging it. Oh, let's get that twin. Yeah, we're getting there. I mean, it's one of these I think is a bit of a weakness, and I think it stems from its arcade roots, is really the fact that, um, unlike a lot of other games, you know, like a lot of shooters, yeah, the levels do repeat it. Oh, that's a bit of slowdown. I mean, it should be noted, I'm actually... I'm running this on my Amiga 1200 and loading it off the, the hard drive through WHD load, so there might be some stuff with the fixes that, you know, the compatibility fixes they do as part of that to maybe break it a bit. So I should, should probably have worn that head before starting. Ah, uh, Mr. How we go? Oh, no, and I've just lost my twin fire. Alright. Next goose. And I think that's game over. Alright. I'm going to... Press any key stuff. I'm going to switch over to the... Um, I'm going to switch over to the Jeep now. We'll see how it plays with the Jeep. And I think that's a good way to round it up. So... think All right, let the controls come up this is it makes sense I, I have to admit I prefer the options on the 64 because you just hit the fire on port like hit fire on one port to pick the to pick the heli and then the other port. all right so for heli let's go f1 and let's go f7 so now I will start as the Jeep. Yeah. All right, and it's fire. I forgot it was, I thought it was fire and left, right, but it's fire and up, down to to shift your, your turret over. And again, you know, the Jeep here, you got that, ooh. With the Jeep, it's all about mastering that turret control. Oh, that's something different. On the 64 version, the Jeep, oh. <laughs> Yeah, on the 64 version, you actually don't get that little downward, uh, little downward shot as you jump. All right. Now I've never been able to pull it off, but they're supposed to be um, with the goose copters. You're supposed to be able to, if you can shoot them out quick enough. You're supposed to be able to get like double power-ups or something from them. Like, so, you know, if you play your two player, they'll drop out two power-ups, one for each player. Oh. But if you take them out quick enough, they'll actually spot two power-ups. So player one, well, they'll spot four. So player one will get two, player two will get two. But I've never, never quite, I didn't even know about that until I started watching some other people do gameplays. Yeah, all in all, this is really a great, this is absolutely a great conversion. Um, I, it's funny how I actually got my hands on this, is um, this was nearly a year ago, I was actually, with some friends, did a mass haul for, so, well, it was July. So when I did my updates, I sort of talked about it. We went for this haul for a friend, of one of my friends who had a whole bunch of, um, hardware and software we want to get rid of and yeah we sort of me and my friends were divvying it up at the end of the night 
Um, that was just silly. And yeah, out of the lot was like, ooh, I'll take Silkworm because they didn't have any interest in it and I, you know, I really love the 64 version, which I will have to cover someday. Ooh. Yeah, this is much tougher. It is much tougher than on the 64. Um, I will have to cover that, as I said. But yeah, you know, it was sort of like, oh, I'll take that. And when we were dividing all the games up, you know, which ones we wanted in particular and whatnot. Ooh, nice. That effect when the when your smart bomb goes off is much nicer. And I think the big thing with this version is that the co-op aspect is, feels way certainly feels way more important. As on the 64, I could sort of hold my own with both the heli and the Jeep. But I can't do that much here on the Amiga, and I think that's a bit more accurate of the design of the game. You know, it's really about trying to balance that in. And I've got to say, this is absolutely a great conversion. Um, I loved it on the 64 as well, and I think, yeah, you're an Amiga fan, definitely get it on that. I don't know what it's like on the other machines. I've never really played on any of the other 8-bits uh, or, or the ST, but here it's pretty damn solid, really good fun. Um, that's that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to doing more Amiga games. I'm just hoping this was just, you know, my first test run. Um, there might be, I mean, I'm looking at, I have this captured over composite, um, and I notice, and I'm looking at, and I see a bit of, you know, line interference noise, so I don't know how well that's gonna come out on the, when I edit it all together. Hopefully it's not as bad as I think it might be. But yeah, thanks again for watching. Thanks again for subscribing, as always. Um, and I look forward to bringing you more gameplay soon. Thanks for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, please do consider leaving a thumbs up or a comment down below. If you want to see new videos as I release them, uh, go on ahead and hit the subscribe link for more.